Welcome to the Orange Hammer Podcast. My name is Corbett Storick. I've been a licensed general contractor for eight plus years, specializing in new construction, renovation, furniture building. I'm the son of an architect and an interior designer, and I've been surrounded in this industry since birth, watching all aspects from concept, design, build, punch list, and of course, all the problems that come up in between. In my time in Durham, North Carolina, I've noticed a significant gap in knowledge between homeowners who need work and the people who do the work. On this podcast, I hope to break down the process of homeownership from the perspective of both the homeowner and the contractor in an effort to help raise the knowledge of homeowners about their homes and the construction slash renovation process. I hope you enjoy. If you're enjoying the Orange Hammer podcast, or if you have a topic that you want covered, or have recently done a project, please contact the Orange Hammer podcast. The Orange Hammer podcast is on Instagram and Facebook. Please like and subscribe, share on whatever platform you're enjoying your podcast on. Also check out our YouTube channel, The Orange Hammer. The Orange Hammer podcast is proud to be brought to you by CRS Contracting LLC for all your construction and handyman needs new buildings to renovations, furniture building, EV charger install, or even a TV mounted, you can call me, Corbett Storick. It'd be my pleasure to help you. You can find me on Instagram at CRS Contracting. WSDG, the Walter Storick Design Group, specialists in architectural and acoustical consulting. Check out WSDG.com. And Taylor Bragg, for all your artistic needs in all mediums, you can find her on Instagram at brag underscore about underscore art. That's brag, B-R-G-G, with two Gs. She's the fantastic artist behind the Orange Hammer logo, and she did my fantastic table painting of my podcasting table. everybody welcome to the orange hammer podcast we've got noah crawford in the building noah how are you doing today i mean i'm doing great i woke up so that's it that's it so far no, yeah another day getting after it man <laughs> working from home a little bit playing with my my kittens no uh no window emergencies no no <laughs> yeah i heard you had one though i'm good with the windows though dude i was i was not expecting that i sent my uh siding window and trim guy out to a neighbor's house to just you know some rotted wood we were hoping rip it off put some new wood on yeah and he calls me and he's like the two windows you wanted me to look at are completely rotted like we need a whole new everything and then as we walked around the house with the client it was like she was like what about that window and i was like like the screwdriver is not supposed to go through the wood. Yeah. Like that's real bad mm-hmm. rot. And mm-hmm. so what started as a quick little si- or like little piece of siding, two pieces of trim turned into, we got to order her seven new windows Yeah, and do nothing until they get here. I'm sure she wasn't happy, but that's not your fault. Oh, she was very upset. She was, I was, I, she came out of the house. I was like, good morning. And she immediately was <laughs> like, no, it's not. <laughs> I was like, okay, well. I'm sorry. All sorry. I can do is tell you I won't rip you off, but yeah. you want to replace these very rotted windows before things get worse. How tough so. is a window install job? Is that pretty easy? Um, I mean, in in general, like, you know, the, the hardest part is what I just described. It's okay. giving that heartbreak to the client. Yeah. Um, Breaking the news. Yeah, because it sucks. I mean, I, I don't feel good telling her that. Like, it's a little, you know, I... I'm glad I got a little bit more work for Ray, my window installer, but I'd, I'd much rather be swapping. I'd much rather be him installing windows on a new construction than this. But for the most part, pending how the window is trimmed and the siding on the house, it's, it has varying degrees of difficulty. So like mm-hmm. if you have a vinyl siding or wood siding, and there's like, you know, a one by four piece of trim all the way around the window. So it's like window, piece of trim, and then the siding hits that. Yeah. You don't have to touch your siding. You just pop out that trim, yeah. which exposes the nailing strip. Mm-hmm. You rip that out, cut it out, whatever you got to do. You Hopefully it's easy. And then you just have to make sure the new window is the correct size and re-tape like tape it with plastic and, and window tape. And then just put the 
either the same trim if it came off nice or replace it. Um, okay. When you get to like stone or brick siding, things get a little bit more, uh, the difficulty rating just goes up a hair because a lot of... Um, a lot of brick houses that you see are not actually made of brick. It's just brick veneer siding. But your new window has to be so beyond flawless in terms of it fitting into that brick opening. Yeah. And then you've got to use like specialty extra thick brick caulking. And then on the inside, you still have to retrim the window. And it just gets a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm having a headache just hearing it, honestly. <laughs> hey, you wanted to come on the construction podcast? Let's do it, man. Yeah. You want you want me to bore you with uh, rebar sizes? Let's oh, go. Man. Yeah. yeah. Let's do no. it. Let's do it. <laughs> so um, let's shout out Kaylee Bain for hosting the uh, Meet and Mingle yes. um, at Bond Brothers. Great networking event. Um, I think so, even though the storm hit and I, you know, I could have stayed, but I left. When everything started. I drove out in the middle of the storm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was not that much fun, if I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was tough. Uh, but I actually had to leave for something else, and I just happened to be stuck in that storm. <laughs> but um, yeah. but it's a fun event. I'm amazed that she has put that on more or less by herself. She even has sponsors. Well, I'm sure it's helping her business as well. Oh, 100%. Right? right. Yeah. No, it, she doesn't do it because it's fun. She does it because it's a great <laughs> market. But, yeah. you know, for... For guys like me and you, and yesterday I had Justin Harmon here, um, it's free. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Free, oh, by the drink. way, there's a drink ticket, yep. um, a free headshot if you want one. Yeah, that was an amazing uh, thing that he did as well. Like, just yeah. got free headshots. Like, perfect. And and then, oh, by the way, like, it's – I'm not into beer, but if you are, it's a cool brewery. Yeah. And – Food truck outside. Food truck good outside. Vibes. Good vibes. And it's like – it's – it's less like, what is your business? What just give me yeah. your card? It's more just like a social event, and it uh, we all happen to be small business owners trying to elevate each other. Mm-hmm. And there's a palpable energy when you just, you know, we all went there with smiles and trying to grow our business, meet cool people in or around our business, and and see what happens. And it's fun. Yeah, yeah I've been going to a lot of networking events recently man um and i've tried to try not to have too many high expectations like oh i'm gonna meet you know five dream clients you know what i mean just kind of go have fun and you know you never know who who someone's gonna know and so i've been really i haven't previously but i'm really trying to focus on my relationships these past like six months and it's been going well so far yeah i'm i'm very similar even in the time frame where i'm just getting into it the last couple of months Mm -hmm. i was kind of doing one kind of construction with my family slash partners for the last like 10 years. And we all collectively were like, we don't want to do that anymore. What was it? Buying homes, gutting Uh, them to the studs, making them one of a kind, unique originals designed by my mother and father, and then renting them out. And so we have this beautiful collection of, of nine or 10 rental properties in Durham, but we all looked at each other and went, we don't really want to do this anymore. And I was like, that's fine. Then I went on a vacation, came back from the vacation and realized I don't have clients. Like I spent Mm -hmm. 10 years doing this great work, but I I didn't use it to build the client base. I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to do the like, um, like I'm not going to spend like the absorbent amounts of money on a website nobody checks or advertising yeah. that's not going to work. People got to know you first. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, okay, what's the best way to do this? And it's the networking events. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they've turned out to be really fun. I go to this rap networking event in Franklin. The meet and mingle is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, is the, the rap one, is that at the shooting range? They or did one at the shooting I was range. At that one, yeah. Yeah, they, they rotate different businesses. Oh, okay. So... The month before the shooting range one, because I couldn't make that one, they were at a pizza place in Franklin. Mm. And it was awesome because it was like free pizzas were coming out oh, man. all day. And, you know, it's the, it's the, you have the mentality where it's like if you go there with no expectations, it's going to be great. Only with something good, right? Yeah. Like every time I go, house, right? I run out of business cards. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I, I just run out every time. And I always get a nice collection of business cards. And then the next day, I'll throw some. So mindless TV on and input them one at a time and then send a text like, hey, 
what's up? Want to get a coffee? Like, yeah. even if we don't have work together. I mean, you and I don't have any work to do together. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we both liked talking to each other. And I think inviting you on a podcast, you were like, oh, that's exciting. That's kind of my forte, yeah, right? There you go. Yeah. Didn't, didn't I send you a video message too? Or you did. Before my, I texted people, yeah. you came in with a video message. Mm-hmm. So let's jump in right. Let's just jump both feet in. What do you do? Perfect. I'm a video guy. Been doing video for five years and originally did music videos, but I won't dwell on that too much. Uh, just because you can, by the way, it's I, our podcast. Okay. Yeah, you're so right. There are so many crazy stories from that time, which we'll probably circle back around to. Yeah, it. sure. As far as what I do now, I try and do a lot of results based video for clients. And so that's different for everyone, right? And I have a, I have a thousand different offers for people like, Hey, look, I can, I can pr- uh, produce four YouTube videos a month for you. Or, Hey, look, I can build a landing page and create a Facebook ad for you. It's, there's so many different things. Um, I think the, coolest without getting too in the weeds of everything the coolest video that i create right now that pretty much anyone can benefit from is a a video business card man and it's just really i know you love authenticity right especially with the podcast that's really what is conveyed and this is a this is an asset man you make it once you can use it for years and i I love that just how you bought the the rental properties you know you're done with that work but that's work you've done and you're going to get paid forever. I mean, I know you got to manage and everything, but so similar concept, man. Uh, really just, it's an interview form. Someone comes on camera and they're like, Hey, look, this is my name. This is why I do what I do. Uh, and for me personally, like th- that reason for me would be like, Hey, look, I love video. I grew up with it. Now I'm trying to help other people make money. And then my personal goal is to put my mom in a real estate property because she's dealing with some personal issues. So now you hear that and you're like, oh, wow, I'm emotionally connected to this guy. Now I'm not just shopping around for video people. I'm not trying to get the best quote. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the more, mo- one of the more powerful assets that I create. So a video business card. So obviously everybody knows old school standard business oh, yeah. cards, right? Regular piece of paper, vertical, horizontal, I don't care. Mine are double-sided. There's a QR code on there because I just got new ones and I'm trying to modernize. So when you say a digital business card, I know what digital means and I know what business card means. Are you talking like it's a 40 second clip that I text to people instead of handing them a business card? Is it, is it that great question? You can use it however you like. So there's a few, and that's a very smart way to do it. Just texting it. But here are the main ways you can use it. And here's how it looks like. So well, let me explain what it looks like. So it's a two to three minute video. Really okay. short, right? Because we're all fighting for attention. You know, you can, yeah. someone could visit your website and they're about to book some contracting services and then they look up, the baby's crying. Oh, I got to handle that. And they forget. But two to three minute video, um, uh, really sim- like it's an interview combined with supporting footage. So for you, for an example, you would come on and say, hey, look, this is who I am and this is why I do what I do. And then we would show footage of you doing construction or managing your team. And as far as like actually sending it to people, uh, putting it at the top, the very top of your website, very powerful. That's where someone lands. And just me personally, I, I don't know if this is going to appeal just to the younger audience or anybody, but man, I just want to go somewhere, watch a quick video and make a decision. Like, do I want to get this or do I not? Um, so yeah, you can, I, I also suggest putting in your email signature. Like if you do a lot of cold emails or even if you're talking with clients or a, a prospect, you could be, uh, you can offer a proposal like, Hey, look, this job's going to cost blank amount of money. And they're, they're looking at it. They're thinking about it. Then they see the video at the, the bottom of the email. They're like, let me check this out. Then they hear it. They get to like you, they get to trust you, get to know you. Boom. Yes. And it's a, it's a link. You're just posting like in your signature or yeah, the so video is a, actually there. It would uh, be an embed. So there's a way you can embed it. So essentially it, it looks as if you can see the video and there's just a play button. So you just click. Oh, it. Okay. Okay. So there's different ways to implement it. So yeah, website, email, signature, um, and using it as an actual like Facebook ad, you know, mm. like just pushing that out there. Um, but that's a whole another conversation as far as tweaking that and getting that to perform really good. But yeah, man, that's the, that's the main offer. I usually combine that with other things. Sometimes it makes more sense to make a bunch of reels for someone. Um, we're in Durham right now. Actually, I just, I blew up somebody on TikTok in Durham like a year ago at this point and you wouldn't know him, but he makes music and he blew up because every single day we posted a 30 second little video of him talking about his life. And so for him, he grew up very poor environment, um, dealt with police, chose to sell drugs, you know, and so he had a lot to talk about. 
right? You know, losing friends, getting into shootouts, crazy stuff. And like eventually, like three months in, being consistent, I'd make a post, wake up the next day, 500,000 views, all free, free advertisement, you know? Um, well, didn't he have to pay you to do it? Yes. Right. So it's not free advertisement. Not free advertisement, no. Um, did that translate for him into like now he's booked musically? Like, so did it work out? This is why I've pivoted from music artists. So that's, like I said, the first five years I was doing music videos, right? Wasn't even thinking about results. Like, hey, look, I'm going to make the best looking video. I don't really care. Like, I wasn't thinking about views or money made. And so for him. Well, also, it's because it's not. It's not necessarily relevant. The client is the musician, mm -hmm. and if they want to hire you to do a video, yeah. you give them a finished video. It's on now on them yeah. to post or whatever. Like you, which so many people don't understand. Like you, talent is like so small when it comes to music. Like you got to have the business brain, and like nobody had that. Like I worked with three hundred plus people, barely anybody had that. Mm. Um, but it, it it didn't translate so well for him, unfortunately, because. Um, you know, he's in a situation where he's got money, right? He's pretty well off with what he does, in quotation marks. And so there's an element of not taking it too seriously. And then there's an element of him not really necessarily having a clear business direction. Mm, so okay. the thing that he did do with that attention is he actually launched his own podcast. And in doing that, I believe that was on month four, um, and we essentially like posted a clip and it was like him, like just answering interview questions with me and people assumed he had a podcast. He's like, where can I listen? I'm like, it's not out yet. So we like, we built up this fan base of hungry people. And then when it dropped, um, on YouTube, we had 5,000 people on the first week directly go to that video and watch it. Um, and unfortunately he hasn't kept up the consistency as well. So it kind of just slowly kind of died down, unfortunately. So and 5,000 YouTube views is not. We're not making money yet. Mm -mm. You no, need like no millions. money unless you're doing affiliates or anything, which he wasn't. Um, so yeah, that's you know, and so now I'm ready to make an impact. Like, okay, I want I want what I do to translate to money for someone. Right. Yeah, I mean, so that's where I'm going right now. It's difficult. It would be difficult for somebody like me to be like, sure, I'll burn whatever the amount of money you're asking for this three minute video. Yeah. And then, okay, cool. Now I have a three minute video that's going to be at the end of emails yeah. that I'm sending to people I'm already connected to. Like, that's just, I lit that on fire, <laughs> you know, like that, you know, but if they, if you're, you know, but morphing that into a strategy of like, yeah, I make the video, but then this is what I can do with the video mm -hmm. and what I can do with the video can directly correlate to these results, this many leads or, yeah. you know, potential for this kind of earning on, I don't know, YouTube or, right. you know, this can now be a Facebook ad, but those aren't free either. So yeah, well, nothing's free, man. That's just, you know, it's true. That's how it is. We get, yeah. you know, it's this land of the free, but we pay for it. Right. For sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm working on right now, man, is I'm, I'm, I'm working with clients that really make sense. I'm throwing them a deal. Like, Hey, look, I am trying to build up my portfolio. Like I want to like in a year, I want to be like, Hey, look, I, I made this lady 10 times more money than she paid me. Um, so that's, that's what I'm working towards. I'm working towards that promise. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, man. What was the, what was the like reason for the shift? A few things. Cause I assume you like all those cool music videos, you were getting paid to make them. I was getting paid pretty good. Yeah. Getting paid pretty good. Uh, two years in, I was living with my mom, so I was saving a lot of expenses, but I actually ended up purchasing my dream camera. I spent like 10 grand on this movie camera. Oh, um, is that, know, what do these cost? Oh, these are, these are relatively cheap. These well, by the way, we're on, we're on film we're for on like film, the man. first time yeah, yeah, in yeah. Orange Hammer history. These That's are, not a Zoom call. So what's up? What's up? Oh yeah. 4K. <laughs> 4K. These are just a grand each though. These aren't too bad. I love how you say that. Like that's not expensive. It's, it's not. expensive. It's not. I that can... camera was like 65 bucks. It's 4K. Yeah, but the more you spend, the more you're like, okay, now I got to use it. Yeah, okay, touche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Notice how I'm not using it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's because, as I told you all before we started, like, most of my um, guests, like, are they just don't want to be on camera. They're like, I'm just not comfortable. I didn't wear makeup or I didn't dress a certain way. And I'm just like. Which is very interesting. Like, I'm taking a picture of you when we're done either way for the Instagram. Yeah. So, okay. But if yeah. you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. Yeah. 
you know, and, and that's, you know, it's common from what I've heard. Like even some of my clients, um, I work with this one really good massage therapist. And the first time we filmed, you know, one of his video business card, um, you know, he was kind of down on himself. He's like, oh, that, that didn't come out the right way or that sounded stupid. A lot of people, ha- you know, have these limiting beliefs. And it's like that's a lot of times the real issue when it comes to like, OK, I want to take my business digital. I want to go on social media, see what I can do. But the real obstacle is not like doing it. It's like, oh, I got to. I got to look stupid, which nobody cares, right? But I got to like, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah, but the the quotes look stupid is actually the authenticity that people want. Yes. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you, if you, if Super everybody bad. sounded like a robot and had read a script, mm-hmm. you know, it, that's not, that's not the point. It's actually the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, which is exactly why there's no questions for these or rehearsed anything. This is like I like that. Let's just see what let's just see what happens. That's yeah. how I that's how I film the the VBC. I'm like, yeah. which there's only like three questions I ask people, but yeah, it's it's really cool. Yeah. Um, what you asked me about why I don't help, I do stuff for music people? No, I was more just interested in like why you left what sounds like was a lucrative thing doing mm. music videos to morph into what you're doing now. Yeah. Uh. I think culture, safety, and like job safety. Well, people, or like physically unsafe physical. at at music video. Well, I worked with locations. a lot of rappers, and they want to look dangerous, and that involves pointing a gun at the camera. Mm. And they tell me it's unloaded when it's not. Okay, so that's there, not cool. Someone getting beat up because he stole the other guy's drugs. Somebody getting arrested. And you're just the video dude watching this. I'm just a video this. guy with the body armor and the Glock on my hip. I look like a parole officer when I'm out there. <laughs> and and just culture, man. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of crazy stuff in the music scene. Like, people will start arguments with other people for the publicity. Did you get into that world f- just purely because of your personal love of music? Nah. No. Okay. Somebody asked me to. Um, I, so I you have a love of video. Love of video. And yeah. cameras yeah. and how that works. And mm-hmm. and then somebody was like, oh, you've got a camera? You want to film a music video? Exactly. And it, yeah. And I didn't know what that was going to be. Man, I, I, I'd I film in a dance video for a fellow classmate, which was like one of my first ones. And then these two younger guys, they were in high school. They're like, hey, you trying to film some videos? So I actually drove them around. <laughs> Or three, we did three videos. Like I didn't even think of it as a business. You know, we drove. I was in Rocky Mountains. So I drove an hour to Raleigh and we filmed a video. Mm. Um, and that would happen a lot. Like people would pay for a music video, but they need me to drive them. They need to hop in my back seat. So I was like a taxi at one point, and it was just a little odd. That um, is, I mean, not the standard, but you know, when not you're, the strangest when thing you're either. starting out, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. High school kids. I mean, if the money is real, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I well, mean, I, funny thing yeah. you say that. Uh, a lot of times they would pay me to bring fake money, so I have a duffel bag with what looks like to be a million dollars in cash, but it is not real. Where does one get Prop, fake propmoviemoney dot com? Propmoviemoney dot com. I have an affiliate link. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, so how real do they look? Do you have one in your car? Oh, I wish I did. Darn, I just want to look at one. Yeah. They are, are they hundreds, I assume? You can get whatever you want. What, so, what you have, though? I have... A million and tens would be a big bag. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> so essentially, I have like bundles. So like a stack of 10 grand of a hundreds. I have a bunch of those. And you can get them filled, but I have them blank. So at the top and the bottom, like the first few bills are printed oh, in the okay. middle is blank. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But you can also get them to look like distressed. So they look a little bit more real. And the, and the only other difference is the color is a little lighter because on camera that gets a little darker with color grading. And obviously it doesn't say this is a legal note of tender. It says like this is for movie purposes. Only. Right. But as I mean, long if you as you zoom, don't do close up. I was going to say, if you don't yeah. zoom in. So like, and maybe you don't know, but when we're watching like a uh, $400 million Martin Scorsese movie, mm-hmm. do you think that's they're using prop money or they just went and got Two hundred thousand dollars, and no, then they dude. just have a security person, no, and they just bring it back. Prop money, unless he's got a money. close up on a hundred dollar bill, and he's like burning it. For, he probably uses something real for that. But um, yeah, no, not they don't have to. No, we've uh, never. So we've we've never seen real money on screen. 
Probably not. Probably not. Okay. Probably not. No. They're just good at um, their job. Same thing with drugs. I mean, well, I've heard that a lot of movies that Snoop Dogg's on, he actually brings in his own, like, you know, you know, weed and stuff. But I know that to be true for a fact. Like, when he did, most recently, he uh, he performed at Coastal Credit in Raleigh. Yeah, I didn't go to that. I didn't go either, but I did hear that, I forget the name of the hotel, but, like, it's not just a, f- a, a room. They close a floor. And they have not, to put right? him on the top because smoke rises. And they, they can't just, do anything about it. Snoop has been cemented. What a status. Like, I don't, I, uh, with the exception of maybe the White House, I don't know if there's anywhere he could go and not smoke weed and get, get in trouble. Like he, I want to say he might have brought something there. I don't know. That, I can't confirm any of that. But like, I, I, if it was Obama and Snoop walked in, maybe yeah. Obama doesn't take a hit, but I... Something tells me Snoop yeah. can just like smoke cool with it. in the SUV on the way there, and it's not a big deal. He's just he's Snoop. I mean, what yeah. are you, you going to throw Snoop in jail for smoking he's just weed? Doing side like, he's so achieved. Like, yeah, it's side quest. A, That's such a good way of saying it. He's just doing side quests. He made a kids' music album, <laughs> dude. He does Bic lighter commercials with Martha Stewart. Yeah, very smart. And it's like Martha lighting a candle and Snoop going, and for everything else, like. Yeah, yeah. How do we get away with that? How does he get away? I love it. I love it. Yeah. I can't even, I can't badmouth Snoop once. He's been married to the same person since he was like 18 years old. Really? Yeah. There's pictures of him and his lovely wife. I forget her name, but they've been like high school sweethearts Mm. and been together since. And, you know, unfortunately in the hip hop and rap music world, it's not uncommon for whatever the reason feud of some kind for, you know, a hip hop artist to be removed from life. Unfortunately, Mm -hmm. they get gunned down with some regularity Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're looking, we are literally living in a history of like, we've got some OGs that are still here that, Mm -hmm. you know, with a flip of a coin, they could have been gone. Like Dre is an old guy now. And Snoop is an old Eminem. Like these guys are old. Most of their, uh, not most, a lot of their colleagues. They don't get that old. Yeah. They died. Before 30. Yeah. You know, so that's like, we, you know, (laughs) there's uh, not a lot of how to live life as a rapper turned 60. Like that, that book's very, there's not a lot of chapters there. Snoop is kind of writing it in real time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But you know, we should do what he does. He's got it down. Right. Yeah. Him well, and Wiz, they're hysterical. Yes, they are. So. Well, unfortunately, I've, I've witnessed, not seen it, but I've worked with individuals and then they passed away. Very, very uh, insane feeling, especially when I get the thoughts of, oh, man, you know, he really, he really had something or, man, you know, what if I made the video a little better and it did a little better for him? You know, so. Right. Like doing people justice and. You know, that's actually weighed on you, like when the, like the person that's passed away. You're like, if I had made yeah. this video a little better, and he had made a little bit more money, he might have not been in that life. That's yeah. that's legitimately weighed on like your well, soul. More, more recently on my, actually my, uh, an old barber that I had. He, he's in Rocky Mount, small town. I'm, I moved out a few years ago, so I haven't seen him in, in a long time. Is uh, is that where you're from originally? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And so I heard he, he passed away, and I was like, man. I didn't, I didn't make anything for him. Like he was cutting my hair. I was like five years younger. I was just getting into it. He was like, yeah, man, I'd, I'd love to get into the video stuff, but you know, old guy like me, I could never do it. So he had those limiting beliefs. And then I heard he, you know, he died and I was like, man, if I had just made three videos in exchange for some yeah, haircuts or something, something, you know, even if I made him happier, um, cause I didn't, I don't know. I didn't get the details on how everything happened, but so there's, there's that. Um, and then, you know, while we're on this topic, not to get too dark, but I did turn down a job in which the videographer went and got killed. Well, I'm glad you turned the job down. Yeah. I never do stuff in nightclubs anymore. Nightclubs? So, yes. Because no shit. that's a very common area for people to get riled up and just start shooting. You so. know, I'm not a nightclub person, mm-hmm. just in general. I mean, I, I don't really drink. So for me, a nightclub is like, all these people can't hear me, and they're all <laughs> drunk. Yeah. And yeah. Because I'm not drunk, they're all annoying. Yeah, and it's so not, it's, it's like, what am what am I doing here? They're not like long term friend material either, unless you're into that. But I mean, yeah, you know, I'm I'm gonna refrain from judging on that just okay. because I I have not 
been at clubs enough and met someone at a club and been like terrible human, don't want to be associated or met someone at a club and been like, that's my bestie. What are you talking about? Yeah. So I don't really have a frame of reference, but I would say I probably agree. I mean, I definitely, it's not a scene I want to be around. I'm not a big drinker. I don't want to take those drugs, especially nowadays. You like, don't know what's in anything. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm not into any of the drugs that you would find at a nightclub. But even if I was, the whole, like, fentanyl scare mm. is horrifying. Like, I have never tried cocaine in my life. If you have, yeah. I have zero judgment. No. I don't care. But when I hear about seven comedians I follow and respect in uh, stand-up comedy is my thing. Yeah. And six, and they all were in L.A. and they went to a house party and did some minor amounts of recreational cocaine and six are dead and one's in the hospital because of fentanyl they didn't know was in there. Wow. That's horrifying. Mm -hmm. And me personally, I never get to hear that comedy again. That's freaking sad. Yeah. Like, obviously, loss of life is more sad than me not getting comedy. But, but they'll never produce anything more. They'll never produce Which anything is gonna more. It's going to impact a lot more people. You know, it's like the end of a, I mean, it's art. Right? Yeah. yeah, six artists got, like, you know, six Jimi Hendrixes just got gunned down mm -hmm. by drugs. Yep. And not even, like, they were idiots and they did too much coke. They just, like, had no idea well, that this fentanyl... Well, you've seen the pictures of how much it takes, right? The lethal dose? Yeah, isn't it, like, it's like a, a droplet. It's, like, like the a, tiniest, like, of the amount like of a rice. dime or something. Yeah, it's, yeah. like, so insane. I, to be honest, I don't even really know what fentanyl is or, like, why it was Either. invented or how it's getting in all these drugs. I don't know. But I hear about it more and more and more, and all I can say is, like, I'm just really glad I never was into those drugs. Like, I don't judge the people into those drugs. I don't have that many of them in my life also. Yeah. But, like, if I was really into cocaine and I did a moderate amount and it didn't ruin my life and then I went and got cocaine one month and yeah. died because of fentanyl, yeah. that would be sad. Yeah. And still, you know, maybe poor decision, maybe not. View it how you want, but still it shouldn't have happened, right? Should right. It, yeah. That's very, very well said. Poor decision, view it how you want. We're not going to deny that's a poor decision. But that dude or lady does not deserve to die. Yeah. They deserve, they, they should be getting some help mm -hmm. figuring out what's hurting in their life that they want to numb it with cocaine. Yeah, I don't know what the surge of that is about. I'm really not educated, but I, I know that with anything, people are also using the word fentanyl to scare people away from other things. True, um, true. Just for an example, I, I'm pretty sure this is correct, so don't quote me, but I, I know that you know some people say, hey, look, you know they're putting fentanyl in marijuana. Don't smoke it. Well, if you look it up, fentanyl does not. You know, it, it gets destroyed when it gets burned. So that's not even a, a thing, in my opinion. I don't, you know, don't, don't do this on according to my advice, but still. Oh, we're quoting, like, we're quoting you. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, I have, well, I have the New York Times on speed uh, dial. No, I'm just kidding. This is for entertainment purposes. <laughs> nope, only. nope, nope, nope. He said it first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't retroactive that take one. Take that out Sorry. of the video business card. Don't put that in there, please. <laughs> you could take it out of your video, but it's staying in my audio. Okay. No. <laughs> great, great. I didn't know that fentanyl was destroyed when burned. I didn't know fentanyl was going into marijuana. Mm -hmm. um, I really only hear about fentanyl in a negative connotation, usually on a podcast between two other comedians that I'm listening to while I'm driving. Mm -hmm. And it's like something freaking hilarious. And then somehow fentanyl gets mentioned. And then they're usually talking about something awful because yeah. there's no, I have yet to hear a positive story where fentanyl is a character. I imagine there's, I mean, I'm sure there are a few, but I'm sure nobody's doing routine out of it either, right? Like, Yeah. Also, I don't know anybody who's like, I'm trying to take fentanyl. Like everybody, yeah. everybody, for the most part in my world, in my circle, the stories that I'm hearing is like, they were unaware fentanyl was in a different drug. But I don't know if people are like, I want to get high on fentanyl. I don't know what it does. I don't, was it, do you even know? Like, was it made uh, for pharmaceutical purposes? I don't know. Mm -mm. Yeah, we I just don't Googling know. right now, I don't know. Yeah, I just don't know. I don't have, uh, I don't have Jamie on the Joe Rogan podcast. Jamie just give it a goog. Yeah, give it a goog, <laughs> Jamie. Yeah, that dude's the master magician. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's so fast. <laughs> well, 
dude, shout out to Joe Rogan for taking over the entire content space, though, man. Like, he's been doing it for years. Nobody saw him, and he just yep. kept it up, which is, like, one of the biggest things just to, I mean, 20 years from now, this could be a mogul, right? You just got to keep going. I mean, I have various opinions on, you know, Rogan. And he is absolutely the inspiration for my way of doing my podcast. Mm -hmm. For example, like no time limit, no editing. It could be, a, it started as only construction, homeownership stuff. Now it's, if you want to come on and have a cool conversation, let's do it. And people are like, yeah, your voice is great. Keep it going. And most pods fail at seven episodes. We're doing 60 plus. So That's awesome. it, it's fun. And I'm going to keep doing it till it's not, you know, I'm not a bald dude covered in tattoos, but from every, you know, I listen to him more than all the people who make fun of him and everything I've heard that makes fun of him. I'm like, you don't listen to this guy. That's yeah. not correct. Like just, you he, see one clip and you say, you something. see one yeah, clip. Yeah. And then obviously like, you know, there was an entire like, you know, hate destructive thing during coronavirus when he was like i'm not getting the thing he didn't get the shot and but he, he wouldn't even have been able to say that if he didn't have the platform right because i mean everyone was getting shut down they were t they were taking posts off social media if someone was saying something which you know it, it doesn't come down to i think the more important part is just like control and freedom of speech right especially in this digital landscape you know where you, everywhere you look at least my generation they're on their phone right so we've yeah, got to yeah. be able to speak our mind there yep um, and but also, that's, you know, sure, but also, if you want to speak your mind, and your mind is full of shit, <laughs> is there no, like, you know, I, I, I there, there's a double-edged sword there, yeah, for sure. I don't sure. know how to moderate it. Yeah. I don't know how to moderate either. I'm not going to pretend that I have the answer, but there's definitely something to be said for, and I'm not going to name a news program, because I don't even know which one we're referencing, but... There's definitely something to be said for how quickly they get out there, truth or not. And mm -hmm. it's like, wait a minute, what happened? There was, there used to be a time when there was at least the perception. I don't know how true it was back then, but there was at least a perception that the news was true. And like, they took their time to get the facts right. Yeah. And then they reported it. And now it's like, true or not, we don't care. Yeah, Clickbait you. headline yeah. as quickly as possible. And it's weird for me personally, because I see you know, news organizations that I thought were the level-headed ones. But then they're the ones I see on my Facebook feed with this headline. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, shit, crazy headline. And then I click it, and the article is not the same as the headline. It's like, wait a minute, your CNN, you wrote that headline, and you wrote that article? They don't match. You did that for clickbait 100%. And it's like, wait a minute, you're supposed to be the level-headed one. Now I realize you, just like the other side, Fox News, you have a board of directors who want to make money, and the news is not true, at least in my opinion. Yeah. Well, they get the short win when you click, but they, they lose the long-term game when you realize what, what, what they're doing. Um, it's not, you know, a lot of people think it's about with content, it's about clickbait, clickbait. No, it's not. It's, I think it's really just about providing value. Like if like right. I want, like if anything, I'm going to make for, for a client or for myself, like I want you to leave and be like, wow. That's, I learned something, or I can do that. Um, but, yeah, just the bait and the switch with the clickbait. Like, yeah. you, know, you ruin your, your reputation. I feel like, I don't know about you, but, I mean, I, you know, I'm in, well, I guess the only place I see news is Planet Fitness where they got, like, the 20 TVs. I just ignore it completely because I'm, like, you know, I'm not, not trustworthy of that anymore. But, you know, I... Do you well, even watch the news? I don't. Okay. No. I Well, first of all, I don't have cable. So, oh, there you go. That's gone. My gym is on the other side of that wall, and the TV, has, I'm watching Netflix. Um, so my news is like, you know, my Facebook feed, which, if we'll be honest, is, is, has been curated by me for me. So right off the bat, that's, it's biased, the feed. Yeah. It's been curated literally by me based on what I want to see. But specifically with, like, right versus left wing, and the thought, at least in this country, you know, I, I can't speak intelligently about the news in this country, but I definitely can't speak intelligently about the news in other countries. But at least in this country, in my opinion, and for the most part, there have been the two sides. There's been like the conservative Republican Fox 
and the liberal democratic CNN. Mm -hmm. And then I guess you throw in MSNBC as just like, we're in the middle, but we're financial stuff. At least that's how I've interpreted it. And if you're listening and you think I'm wrong, please respectfully write in and correct me. I'm happy to be educated. Respectfully, though. Respectfully, yeah. Like, like my brother trades bonds. MSNBC is on in his office 24-7. Mm. Not CNN, not Fox, because it's finance stuff. Boom, 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 yeah. boom. Not interesting to me, but that's irrelevant. But really, it was the, for me, it was the, the pandemic, the coronavirus and some a, a lot of things, but especially the Joe Rogan attack, where I was like, I'm listening to this dude talk for three hours, giving me the real story from the horse's mouth. And then I'm seeing the baloney on the supposed liberal CNN. And I'm like, I just heard him give me the true story. And that's not true. Like, did you call him? Did you talk to him? Did you interview him? Or did you just throw horse dewormer on a headline? Mm -hmm. And and again, I'm I don't know Joe Rogan. I have no affiliation with him. I'm not like some Rogan sympathizer or whatever. You know, I just, I like his podcast when he when he interviews movie stars, directors, wrestlers, and other comedians, I'm entertained. That's where that ends as far as like me and him. There's no he doesn't know I exist. But I just I listen to it real time and then see it on CNN. And I'm like, that's not true. Like you're yeah. supposed to be the true one and you're completely full of shit. So I was like, I already knew Fox was full of shit. This is my opinion, not a fact. And now in my opinion, CNN's equally as full of shit. And I'm like, okay, now there's no true news. Like who do I listen to? Well, you, you find someone on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> go down a, go kill. down a Reddit rabbit hole. Yeah. Well, something, I don't know. I, I found some decent people. Um, there's a, how I, can, I don't know his name, but there's a YouTuber who does like 30 minute hour long, 30 to a minute hour long documentaries. And mm -hmm. so for an example, he did a video where he's like, here's what it's like at the border. And so he like rode around with a sheriff for like two hours. And just showed him like real stuff. Like there's no political agenda. It's, it seems pretty unbiased. And so he's, he's done pretty, he's some stuff like that. And, and, you know, he's going to go places, man. He's got a Patreon where people can support him and he's just, you know, able to travel around and, just document stuff with the camera. What's a Patreon? Patreon is a platform in which people can pay to receive certain benefits. So if I had a YouTube channel and it was educational or entertaining, and I'm like, hey, guys, you know, I want to keep doing this for a living, support me on Patreon. I might have a, a one tier where it's like, hey, look, you're going to get a video before a week before I drop it. You pay me 5 10 20 bucks a month. Oh, you get it, like, earlier. Well, you can you select what you want to do. So, oh, okay. So I'm okay, sure okay. there's um there's internet girls who are like, hey, you you pay my ten thousand dollar big daddy package and I'll send you a package of my underwear. You know, it's gonna be right, anything. right, 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 right. So um, it's just extra just content, ways of support. right? Okay, yep. okay. Yep. Whatever the content may be, it's just something extra that's not on the free YouTube page. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And it's not a part of you know because with YouTube you don't the real money is not. I mean, I'm sure you, you might know this. Listen to Joe because I know he's content creator. The real money is not on the ads, right? You're not going to get. You know, you get paid very little for the ads that are shown on a YouTube video or even TikTok. TikTok creators are getting paid pretty good now, but um, you're getting paid through either setting up a business model that works with the content that you're going to attract the ideal customer. Which, by the way, you don't even have to go viral. You can have 500 subscribers and make a 10 grand a week doing that, um, or affiliate marketing, right? Or um, Patreon or any sort of sponsorship like that, any sort of collaboration where there's business involved. Um, but and that's where you come in. I could, or somebody else. Well, I don't uh, have to be the guy. We're talking to you, so you should oh. be the guy. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> For listeners, this is the guy. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, man. I'm I'm very lucky. I don't I don't want to work with too many people. I want to go deep with like five people. Oh, okay. So um, you're more interested in like a long-term client where you could percent. be like creating stuff for them on a semi-regular basis, continuing to help them mm -hmm. grow their business. And I don't know, you getting, you know, fees for your work or a profit share or something. Yeah. Well, I want to work with a year to see if I like what's like working with someone. And then look, I'm committed like 10, 20 years. Like let's set up some sort of revenue share, get me invested. And that's it. Like, cause I, and here's the thing, I wrestle with this too, right? Because, like, dude, I have the business acumen, the marketing, the, the sales. You know, I understand the concepts. I have the camera gear. I see the creator economy. I could so do this myself. And I don't know I don't know if it would be better if I focus all my attention on that. I have no idea. But I definitely 
want to do it for someone if it's not me myself or something for a client you know um and yeah it's it's I'll say it's tough for trying to talk to someone who isn't already in the content world because I've got to break down so much stuff and they really got to trust me if they're going to get all this new information from me. Yeah. Um, and then I've got to have someone who has big audacious goals because, man, with YouTube, I mean, the more attention you get, it's, it's possibilities are endless. I mean, look at Mr. Beast. He's probably, he is he's right now here the in North Carolina. Yeah. He's like an hour away as a billion dollar company now. And no, he has a ten billion dollar company. Ten billion dollar company. Yeah, yeah. It's somebody he turned down ten billion for his. Mm, I see. Company. I see. And and then I watched a video where they were interviewing some very wealthy economy dude that people know, and I forgot his name. And he just whipped out his phone. And he was like, "Well, he's got this many users and this many subscribers. Maybe twenty billion. He was like, "That's yeah. It's he shouldn't have sold it. Yeah. Or a good thing he didn't. I was like, "What? Ten billion? What what's left to do? Well, Ten that's billion, the thing man. With him. He can he can do anything, man. You have yeah. the attention. Um, but also, he's not a normal person, and I mean that with a hundred percent respect. And I'm in awe. He doesn't care about money, personally. No, he's de- he's. I think you see interviews with him, and he's like, every every cent we make, we we make the next video. I only bought a bigger house because my other one got broken into mm-hmm. i only have new clothes because they stole my clothes like this is a real interview with him i'm yeah. like he just doesn't care he drives like a subaru he doesn't have a lamborghini mm-hmm. you know and all of the people that work for him he was like that dude is in every video he was our janitor like we're just you know and it's yeah. like well that's amazing because that's yeah. a great leader man because leaders just lift up other people that's that's what they're there for and yeah i mean he's I don't know what to, I think. Yeah. I heard a video about his routine, and I I, mean, I don't know how true it is, but I know I'm that. sure it's not true. Okay, he did okay. that one day, sure. and they were like, "This is your routine." Just sure. like just like Wahlberg doesn't get up at two a.m. every day yeah, and no. pray. Like that's not true, you know? Because he's, pr- he's praying for you right now. He, I, he's not. I know for a fact because he doesn't know who I am, and he doesn't. He you know he's a Christian and I'm a Jew, so he's probably praying for me to change my ways. Uh, but like you know that was like written down once on Instagram. And then James Gordon went over to his house yeah. and he was like, now nah, I slept till four and just was in bed till four fifteen. I was like, see, that was one day. Four fifteen AM. Yeah. Four fifteen AM, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not two when yeah, it yeah. says on his schedule. Yeah. That's the thing, man, with social, it's, it's tough. And I've played the game myself. Right. Cause I've, you know, I, I went through a phase where I posted every single day and it was mostly authentic stuff, but some of it, you know, I'm just showing the highlights, man. I would come on and talk about the losses sometimes, but you know, I'm not showing at all. So when you're posting every single day, did you see, did you see a massive like uptick in traffic and following and all that? And then, so, okay. Yeah. And then the second question is like, did that convert into like, let's talk about it money for you or clients for you? Or was it just, you got more likes a few things to note. This was on Instagram, right? And so that's where my target clients were. You know, a lot of rappers, that's the main thing they're pushing is their Instagram. So you got to know where your target market is. But number two, I went from maybe posting once a week or so um, to posting every day for three months. This was like a legendary moment for me. And um, I used to just post my work, right? So I just say, here's a video that I did. Here's a video that I did. But then I went from posting like, okay, hey, guys, look, I'm living with my mom. This is my goal. This is what I'm doing. Day two, hey, here's behind the scenes. So I'm getting more personal. I'm showing the process. I went from $1,000 a month in revenue to $10,000 a month in revenue. You but make $10,000 a month by for, posting on Instagram. Yes, but it, was, it wasn't the, like, Instagram wasn't paying me, but my clients were. Oh, okay. So I was bringing in more business. Okay, so just to clarify. Right. So zero no money from Instagram. Instagram. No, okay. No, they they actually had a a, a pay pl- um, program, and I wasn't even posting every day. Like I, for some reason, I went through that, and it was really good, really good. And then I got so busy, I didn't like system. I didn't systemize my business. I was a one person, you know, business. And every time I'd get busy, um, I wouldn't have time to market. And then next month, I'd make less than a thousand. I'm like, oh fuck, I gotta <laughs> I gotta run it back up. So that was a interesting cycle that I went through. So now that I'm pivoting and serving business owners, I've already brought on a video editor to the team and another uh, videographer. So I'm getting ready to, you know, I don't mind moving slow right now. 
because it's like I've got to build a lot of stuff out. I mean, the turtle beats the rabbit for a reason. So, like, if you take really slow but positive and correct steps, that's yeah. more interesting. And, yeah. it, you know, that's going to, at least in my opinion, it's going to be better for your long-term goals, I think, than just trying yeah. to get that, like, quick. Be- but it sounds like you're trying to morph away from even having to do that because if you could get, what you say, those five, like, really good long-term clients – you wouldn't have to really be promoting yourself like crazy and worrying about the 10K to 1K nope. to 10K to 1K up and down because you'd have a more steady. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, I'm trying to. Um, and I've already had a lot of success recently that I haven't had, even though I'm not making as much as I used to. Um, and I even re- I remember when COVID happened, when that March 2020 hit, I actually had my best month. It was like 15 grand. Like, that was gross, right? I made like 11 grand profit, but I was like, Yes. But then next month it was like famine, right? But yeah, anyway, um, yeah, just really build with someone. And and I want to become an asset that you can't get rid of, right? I want to be uh, undeniable. Um, and yeah, I haven't, in the past, I was always searching for new clients, always. Um, you know, and like I said, a lot of those rappers weren't dedicated. So they pay for a video and they're like, okay, I did that. I'm done, you know, so it's always finding new clients. Uh, but now I have a few retainer clients paying me monthly. You know, we locked in on like a three month agreement, a six month agreement, and now I'm just gonna do more than what I'm paid for to you know bring them some more money and and continue the relationship. Hopefully, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you bring them enough money where they don't mind paying you, they'll be happy to keep paying you. That's definitely yeah. for sure. So, do you have ideal clients in terms of yes. what they do? Mm-hmm. I am best suited for someone who already sells a high ticket service or product. Because it makes more sense with the ROI. So this could be a med spa, a chiropractor. This could be, um, you know, anyone who's selling something like for more than like a thousand bucks. Or who has customers who are worth more over the lifetime. Um, So like, you know, you could sell something small. But if they're going to buy it a hundred times a year, you know, still pretty good. Um, And then ideally in a perfect world, I'd want to work with a company who's doing uh, at least 500,000 to 2 million in revenue just because they have the teams, right? They're ready to scale. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I'm looking. I don't know specifically what that niche is, man. I'm working with a massage therapist on retainer, which doesn't really fit that uh, ideal client, but it's all right. I have a real estate investor. She's pretty cool. She's looking for distressed sellers. So I've set her up a system to book appointments and we're going to start running ads soon. And by the way, I'm probably going to, do exactly what I did for her for me and just invest in real estate that way and just copy and paste the system. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, I just signed on a tattoo artist. Mm. Uh, she had some cool success. We filmed some videos, put them on TikTok. She had like 20,000 views and she wants to travel the country. And so this is her way of kind of getting known and getting booked outside all over the place. And yeah, my tattoo artist, she told me that she, with no outside help, just kind of like figured out the social media mm-hmm. algorithms and she was like I didn't even really do it for that long and now she is so booked that she will literally like open her books to get appointments and an hour later have to close them and then send out an, uh, a notice on her Instagram and be like books are going to open again in three months. If you want to, if you want to like put a note in your calendar because they're going to, they fill up like that. And I was like, how she was like Instagram and Facebook or not even Facebook. She's like, I just do it on Instagram because they're paired. I was like, how in the hell? So she kind of like, because she's become a friend, she's like now kind of besties with my girlfriend and her her husband and I kind of work out occasionally. She's like, I'll help you. Like, I'm not going to do it for you, but like, I'll sit with you for 30 minutes and tell you what I did. And I did exactly what she said. And I saw this like a massive uptick and I was like, okay, clearly it works. It translated to no clients because I kind of stopped. Also, there's a lack of content. I had to like create a couple more pictures and, I have like those in a folder until I'm ready to do the like three a day for four weekdays posting, yeah, yeah. you know, cause it's like, if I throw up one picture a week, I'm not going to get in right. any of you the algorithms. You didn't, you didn't reach anybody. Nobody was scrolling at 4 PM on a Monday. Right. You know? So, yeah. Yeah. You understand. You understand it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you really got to get into that. Like weekdays, 30 minutes before breakfast, lunch and dinner, get in everybody's it's feed. It's a lifestyle. And yeah. I don't, I don't want to do it. 
is really what it comes That's down where I to. Come in. That's where you come in. And I just yeah. gotta make it worth it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. But um oh, thank you for the I feel so uh, selfish, the, the plugs. What do you mean? This what the selfish, selfish this is the point. <laughs> this is the point. What do you mean, See? selfish plug? See? We're promoting your small it's business. The limiting belief I probably have, man. I probably don't feel like I'm worth it. See, dude, What's your wrong? limiting belief is in there. My limiting belief is that I probably don't have the skill to do social media when mm-hmm. I definitely do, and mm-hmm. I just don't want to. That's the reality. Yeah. Um, but also, like, I'm sure there's a more qualified person like you who would do that. And yeah, probably be way better at it, and because they're getting paid, not forget to do it like I did this morning, you know, with my podcast promotion post that went out at 10 instead yeah. of eight. Oh, so it is in the ether of nothingness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like, as far as you may, you brought up a good point, like finding someone to do it, who's better. Like, you know, and I've come up across this a lot, like, okay, how do I do this one thing? How do I do it? It's not how it's who, who can I reach out to? That's going to help me. Um, which is really cool. And I, um, my mentor just told me recently, I'm like, you know, hey, should I go ahead and hire this video editor? Because, you know, I have one or one or two projects and I could probably make it work, but I'm also trying to pay my bills. And he's like one of his mentors, funny enough, mentor chain. But he said, uh, you know, I am wealthy because I hire people. It's not the other way around. It's not I hire people because I'm wealthy. So you got to hire people before you get that wealth. And it's, you know... And it's a little tough for me. Luckily, I can do stuff like project based. So I'm not paying anyone a salary. I'm just like, hey, right. look, I got this, whatever. I got this two grand job. Here's 500 bucks to knock out 80% of the work. That's the difference between you and me is like, if I hire Ray full time, we were talking about earlier with the It'd windows. Be better for you? No, it wouldn't be better for me oh, okay. because I don't have enough work not yet. to keep him working full time. I've got to call him mm-hmm. when I get a job. Yeah. And then be like, hey, man, we're putting in six windows. Give me your labor for six windows. I'll buy the windows. I'll mark it up so I make a living. And there you go. And then he nice. goes and frames a house for a month. That's not mine. And I give him a call when I get another call. You know, if I had enough work to, to, to keep him working four to five days a week, I would love to have him be my full time employee. And that's your that's your one main guy right now, or you got some other specialist? Oh no no no, he's just a sub. I have forty subs. You name the you name the trade. I have a subcontractor. Yeah, okay. that's that's my uh, type of GC. There's there's a few types. Like there are some construction companies that simply just you know Ralph's Construction has an in house electrician and an in house plumber and a blah and a blah and a blah and a blah. I have nothing in house. I have the list of subs who are the best and know me and I know them and I know what they can do and what they can't do, more importantly. And, you know, when you hire me to do this extension, we'll get the plans drawn up by another subcontractor that you will just pay directly. And then you'll hand me the plans and I'll price it for what it costs. Yeah. And so that's that's how I do it. You know, I, you know, one day... After I hire you, maybe I'll have enough work where I can become the one-stop shop and I just hire my electrician to be my full-time electrician, yeah. you know, but I would really need a lot of very continuous work booked six to eight to 12 months out in advance before I could start hiring all those people. Wow. That far out six, you said eight, six to 12 months. I mean, in my opinion, yeah, because mm-hmm. if I hire all these dudes to be like actual employees. They're going to want their paycheck and I need to get work. I, it's not, I don't have, you know, an extra 10 guys worth of salary laying around to shell out for two months if I don't have the work. So it's just not realistic for me to hire them first like that mentor, but it's a slightly different arrangement. I see. Makes sense. Yeah. I don't know much about the construction business but i mean have you ever thought about does it even make sense to like offer something really specific like i don't because i know you kind of get called for it sounds like maybe just odd jobs in there i mean i get called for everything you know i've i've had people call me to mount a tv oh wow i've had people call me to build their house from the ground up oh wow and and literally everything in between my painter called me this morning at 8.30, and he was like, I got somebody 
who wants to like do a full extension on their house with a three car garage. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, they gave me the plans, but I don't have a license. You have a license. I was like, well, bring me the plans. Let's, let's do it. You can, he's a sheetrocker. I was like, and you do the sheetrock price, the sheetrock for me. And so like, but you know, they, they come from everywhere, all kinds of sizes. You know, I had, you know, a podcast guest, even three, I can't remember her name, three or four guests ago, we finished the podcast and she was like, do you have a flooring guy? We, we want to rip up carpet and put in hardwood, uh, hardwood. I was like, of course I do. Can I come tomorrow? Like, I'll take a look at it. Sure enough. Like, well, I think that's really cool yeah. because you have so many ways to make revenue, right? You have so many skills that I'm assuming it all has to do with like home service or building anything. Yeah. Um, but I think that's, that's pretty cool because you, you've got the trade, but you've got the versatility and the wide array of like things you can do. I think that's really awesome. Yeah. And unlike just, you know, Ray, who I'm, this is not a knock on Ray, who's going to build you your deck. He doesn't have the license to pull the permit, and I do. Mm. So everyone's got their part to play. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But okay. like you know, you know when, for example, like if you hired me to build your house from the ground up, like there is a different person to do the foundation than who does the framing, yeah. Then the electric, then the plumbing, then the HVAC, the roof, the sheetrock, the paint, wow. the the trim on the inside, the flooring, mm. uh. In, in this particular instance, Ray, who framed it, would also do the siding and the windows. And then there's yet another person to do the landscaping. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's like 12 different specialty tradesmen. A lot of project management. That's really what GCs do. Like, okay. I started as a, as a laborer, and I started, like, basically working for a 70-year-old version of me. And we were doing <laughs> decks, fences, kitchen remodels, bathroom remodels. And we were really, really good. And that's all we did. And he did no advertising. He would do, like, the occasional Craigslist post. Like, I do decks, stairs, whatever. And he had his license, and he had his crew. So, like, no one worked for him, but he had his list of subs. So, like, we'd get called in to do a kitchen, and the clients would be like, we demoed it already, and we have the cabinets coming from Home Depot. They'll be here tomorrow. Yeah. So we'd walk in there. We'd install those cabinets and then like we would be done. And then Sandy is his name. He would then call his painter to go in and paint it. Mm. And the painter would be like, how much do you want me to throw on it for you? And he'd be like, put 200 on there for me. Like I would hear this conversation all the time. And the sheet rocker would be like, okay, I'm about to send them a bill for 1700. Do you want anything? And Sandy would be like, make it two grand. Give me 300 bucks. Like, you know, yeah. And and so that's, you know, the sheet rocker's way of thanking him for the gig. Okay. You know. And then, you know, his his plumber would come in after and hook up the sink and, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just the, so it was like that's that's just like all we did and I got to witness how like this dude he worked with the same subs over and over and over again. He built these awesome relationships. He was also retired and selling cars on the side. Like he was just killing mm-hmm. it. And it was like a huge inspiration for me. I was like, I want to be this guy. Like, this is this is the move. You got all these trusted subs. Make let, it happen. Let me ask, because I've heard this. I've been networking in the real estate space a lot. I hear that uh, just contractors and, oh, I guess handymen, too, are a little bit, I guess, lo- a level below. But they're always in need, and there's never enough. Would you agree? Do you, see, do you think that's true? So I keep hearing this on repeat. And... I would love to fill the void. I don't know why I am still looking for work if there's all this need. Yeah. But every time I go to a networking event, I do meet a realtor who confirms that they need a contractor. And I'm immediately like, here's my card. Yeah. Let's let's go. So I'm not sure. It just hasn't trickled and percolated yet. Mm-hmm. I know realtors specifically – they need a contractor for something very specific. And the, the thing is, um, forgive me if I'm mansplaining this to you, but like when you buy a house, you then do due diligence. And that's like, you know, a month and you get an inspection report. You get an inspection and therefore an inspection report. And then you're a first time homeowner buyer in this example. So you don't know Dick yeah. and everything scares you, right? So you get this inspection report 
from John Doe Inspections. And there's 147 things on it. And I'm not, by the way, exaggerating. That's like an average number. Oh. Not kidding. Oh. But 140 of them are not problems. Like, they could be as simple as light didn't turn on, light bulb could be dead. That's also a real-life example. Okay. Or notice a little crack in the foundation, but the foundation's not moving. Patch that crack with a little crack brick putty. Like, this is not a big thing. Okay. Right? But then seven of those things will actually be uh, huge red flags. Like the foundation is shifting or there's a giant beam holding up the house and it's halfway rotted. Like that's right. Yeah. Atomic bomb. Okay. Even if you're not a first time home buyer, those are big red flags. But as a first time home buyer, you get really, really scared because the only person that you can talk to about this is your realtor. Yeah. Right. So then the realtor is going to do this. They're going to go, okay, let's get, a licensed general contractor to look at it and tell you. So I will, so I provide a very simple service. Throw me a hundred bucks, send me the inspection report. Mm -hmm. I'll ignore the 147 things no one cares about. And I will look at those seven things and I'll put them in a word document with my license number and my logo. And I'll go, Item one that you really care about costs 10 grand. Item two costs 15 grand. Item three, not a problem. Item four, 600 bucks. Boom, 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 boom. And then I give that beautiful piece of paper back to the realtor. She adds all that up. It's 20 grand worth of stuff. She can then go fight for a $20,000 price reduction at closing. And so if you, when you do this service for 100 bucks, is there any time in which they don't come to you for the repairs? Most. Most? Why? Not sure. Well, first of all, I am not, I don't know if it worked. Oh, so you don't know if they were able to get a little more money from the seller? Yeah, like maybe they didn't do it. Maybe they pulled out and they just lost their due diligence amount and Mm -hmm. they never actually bought the home. Okay. Right? So also for the record, this is a relatively new thing where I'm networking a lot, meeting a lot of realtors and being like, I can do this for you. Send me your inspection report. Every realtor I meet says the same thing. Where were you last week? And I'm like, I'm here now, man. I can, I can do this for you. It's very interesting because this is kind of correlating to something that I used to do. I used to, with a music video, right? They, they're all cost different. So it's kind of the same, same aspect, right? Because if you want the mansion and the strippers, it's going to cost less than getting the Corvette that's and the prop money. So I would charge... I started at 100 and then I raised it to 250 bucks. but I would hop on a, an hour-long call. We'd plan out the whole video. A week later, I'd give them a storyboard with images. Like, here's exactly what the video is going to look like. Here's the cost. And so it's interesting that we have the same business model, and um, I know this is a different industry, but I, I was able to get most people to actually go with me, but I'm sure it's, it's because of a few different reasons. Um, and, of course, I want to plug because as soon as you said it, I'm like, Throw the VBC on the full report. <laughs> throw it on there. But, um, yeah, I don't – I think there's some opportunity there as far – you say most people don't get back to you, and I, I see the possibility of them just not getting the money from the seller to do it or just backing out of the deal. Well, also there's cases where, like, they – I got my 100 bucks. They got their piece of paper. They got their 20 grand at closing, and then they were like, eh, we're not really worried about it. We're not going to fix it. And they just let it stay unfixed. Okay. It's okay. like, I can't make them fix it, let alone I can't make them hire me. So there's a laundry list of possibilities. But no, for the most part, I would much rather like do 10 of those mm-hmm. and get eight jobs. That would be dope. Yeah, because you're still getting paid to do the report. So that's something. Yeah, exactly. Plus, if we're if we're being honest, which we should always be, that's not a lot of work. That's why I only charge a hundred bucks. You okay. shoot me an email, I spend like twenty minutes at my desk, just kind of doing my best guess, which is an educated guess. But still, I haven't gone out there. I didn't bring my foundation sub with me. Mm-hmm. I'm just using previous knowledge, which is good enough to be like, okay, worst case scenario, this will be this. Okay. Well, let you me know, um... to try to get my realtor to be able to save their clients some money. Okay. Yeah. When, so it sounds like a lot of this communication you're doing is with the realtor. Oh, exclusively. Okay. Yeah. I don't communicate with the sellers. I didn't know if it would be possible if you get the seller's name, email number, and then you just set up like a very simple marketing automation. Like, like every 
four days to get an email or text like, hey, by the way, this is still here. I don't know, just a something, because I, I, mm. I, I know they did. Well, let me ask, with that $100, is that is that getting paid from the real estate agent or from the buyer, potential buyer? It's coming, it's coming from the realtor. Okay. I don't actually know if the realtor is, like, charging the client. I got to imagine they might not be. They might just be eating it because I know they get the commission, obviously, on the sale of the house. But interesting. Yeah. See, if, it's, if it's possible, it would be really cool. And I don't know if this is, like, a breach of, of whatever, but, like, getting the potential buyer's phone and email. Because even if they back out, assuming they're still looking for a house and they might have to get that report next time. So I don't know if you are, do you, uh, I don't know if you collect a list of names and emails and numbers, but like that by itself is just really powerful. Um, yeah. I haven't, that's a, probably a great idea. Honestly, I haven't really been like, Hey, X, Y realtor, give me the information of the potential client. Yeah. But I, I have not done that, but I am like, I built a good enough relationship with the realtor that they want to come to me for that report. Okay. So I'm assuming slash hoping that if that relationship is good enough that they trust me with the report, that they would also be like, "Oh, you actually want to do the work? You should just call Corbett." Like I'm, I'm hoping, yeah. but I, you know, I can't well, guarantee that either. That's who knows, true, right? Because it sounds like she said, uh, "You know, where have you been the past two weeks?" Well, maybe just maybe the other contractors just aren't offering that, and then I don't know. I don't know. You can't count on people to do anything, whether it's just you know, it's true. innocent forgetting. You know, like I said, it comes back to the distraction thing, like having people get distracted. But um, I do know there is a more more than not people are just not doing the work. They're like happy to have gotten that discount at closing. Yeah, you and get then, the house, you get the discount. And then you're like, uh, I don't go in the foundation. I don't go in the crawl space. I forgot about it. And they just don't get it fixed. Well, then may- maybe um, maybe that's what we do or what you do in your content or at least your conversation is just, you know, a lot of stuff can be put off, but like, Hey, you know, what's the cost of not doing this? Is it going to cost more if they neglect it and their whole window rots? You know, it's exactly what happened this morning. I saw the hole in the siding on this upstairs window, like, uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, it's on our list. And I was like, you don't want me to beat the dead horse, but I'm going to say my piece once. That's not going to get better. There's no awning. You guys are capable people. At least fill that hole. I can see that's the size of a half dollar with silicone or something. Like water's just going in there. Like the the rot in your house is happening, yeah. whether you want to believe it or not. Like it's happening. Water's got to go. Water's going in. It's got to go out. Like it. It's not like it's just evaporating. You know what I mean? And sure enough, now we're here and they waited until there was a like noticeable leak coming in at a different spot. And then I happened to roll to see them one day and I was like, Hey, what's up? And they're like, Oh, we have a freaking leak. And I was like, yeah, that window up there still looks bad. And that other one looks bad too. And they're like, yeah, we know, we know. And I was like, do you want me to send my person over? And they were like, yeah, what's well, his number? And I was like, no, I'll just send him. Like, I don't, he's my sub and you'll pay, you'll pay me. Funny enough, yeah. you benefit more from them waiting and the damage being more because I assume the paycheck is more. 100%. But mentally, they feel worse. And between you and me, I feel worse. I would have much rather them had let me fix that right away and it had been like a quick $200 siding patch. Yeah. Now it's like I got to buy seven windows that are probably three to $400 a pop. And that's just the windows. That's not the trim. That's not the paint. That's not the labor. And that's not me making any money, which, by the way, I don't work for free. Funny enough, the the selling for you is is paying you less, right? Like, hey, yeah. don't pay me ten, don't pay me twenty more grand down the road. You got the discount. Um, you know, think about the cost of not doing it. You know, so I, you know, it's and, big, and, and that's an endless content machine um, that you could be putting out. And um, I think we we talked about YouTube earlier. So, um, dude, you could you could. There's some there's some cool videos I could see you making, man. Because I, I, have you ever thought about this this way? Sounds like you got a proposal brewing in oh, your mind. Got something. <laughs> I got something. I, I got more. Que- I got more questions before I even <laughs> it, before I feel uh, you know confident to propose anything. But I what's really cool? I mean, even the podcast, man. The podcast is a content machine. I don't know if you thought about it this way, but literally everything we say 
can be obviously filmed, obviously go on YouTube. Hello. You can even film four 20 minute episodes right here and just have like a little rough plan. And, but the thing is a lot of people don't know this. Like, well, I won't say don't know this, but you can cut that up into hundreds of clips. Hundreds. Oh yeah. I, you're not the first person to be like, why aren't you filming it and making reels? And yeah. I'm like, I just don't want to, I, I don't like, I, that's, you know, I, I need to hire somebody to do that. Like, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. And I spoke to one person um, who was like, I can do that for you. And the amount of money that they wanted, I was just like. What was it? There is no way. At a, after a bunch of back and forth and a discount. Yeah. It was a $200 retainer at 800 a month. What and I was. 200 at 800. $200 retainer and $800 a month. For the service. So a thousand a month. Is that what it I think the two hundred was once and okay. then it'd be eight hundred a month. And it was like you and then and in black and white, you won't see anything for three months. Or you won't see like oh. it you won't see it working for three yeah. months. And I was like, So that's a commitment of three grand. I was like, Yeah. No. Like I just was like so quickly, no. Like <laughs> and this was this was just posting. Yeah. This was just so he wasn't Insta- producing the videos? He was just posting for it? I don't even think it was videos. It was just posts. It was like Instagram and Facebook posts and hashtags. And I was like, that's wow. an insane amount of money. Yeah. Like, Because you still got to come up with the content. Like, he's just handling a few hours of your work, like managing everything. Yeah, uh, exactly. Sure he has the expertise with the like hashtags, but like, to be honest, that's dead. Um, but, wow. Yeah, I was like, I was like, at, at half that, we could maybe have a discussion, but... Mm-hmm. There was no way I was entertaining that, you know, yeah. it's just not, you know, that I, I don't make enough money to sacrifice that amount of money without knowing there's a guaranteed rate of return. Yeah. And that's tough, man. And that's tough with the organic content where you just post and let people do what they do. Um, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's almost, it's pushed me to almost like not go so hard for it. Cause it's like, what am I here to guarantee? Um, but yeah. I think uh, when you make stuff mm-hmm. or, what, or when you make a proposal for a client, does that include like, yeah, I'm going to do this. We'll make this video. We'll edit this video. We'll post this video. Are you then also being like, and all of that needs to be paired with this Facebook advertising budget or is that completely separate? Good question. So when it comes to Facebook and Instagram ads, I'm not offering that yet. I don't offer media buying just yet. I imagine I'll be ready by December with my real estate investor client. I have all the resources to do so. Uh, I even have my best friend. He's actually doing uh, ads for a multi-million dollar company. So it's like your next step. It's my next step, right? A pair. um, I hear they're not that expensive. Well, here's what my best friend said who is in the space. He said there's cheaper ways to get um, leads, right? It's one of the most expensive ways to get leads, actually. Is Facebook ads? Yeah, well, just considering, like, cost per click and everything, um, and I'm not an expert yet, but I, I know what's most important with Facebook ads. I like how you said yet. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Exactly. Some confidence. Yeah. yeah. You got to, you know, you speak and then you become, man. So, um, but I know what's most important with those types of ads is the creative or the video. So, that's why I'm confident, like, oh, man, I've, I've made funny rap videos for three years with low budgets making something with nothing. Like, yeah, I can make the best ads, but... Um, so you asked if I pair any sort of advertising budget with what I do. No, I haven't done that just yet. I will say I'll let you in the back room. What I'm going to do with my real estate investor is say, hey, look, you've already agreed to pay me this much in retainer. I'm going to take money out of my pocket and pay to run your ads. So you're not even going to be paying me anything extra. And then we're going to continue this until we figure out, you know, we're going to do this for six months and then reevaluate the pricing yeah. and stuff. And what you're hoping is at the end of six months, they saw such an amazing uptick that not only do they want to take over paying those ads, but they want to pay, you, they want to give you a raise. Exactly. Or yeah. a, or a rev share or something. Yeah. Something. Um, well, with this lady, she's really cool. She's got a class on creative financing with real estate. And I, I gave her a discount on the retainer and she's going to teach me for free. And her class is so cool, man. She, um, she helps you find the deals. She helps you get them funded. She helps you close them. And then you split the the ending so i think um does she need a gc <laughs> well i'm gonna talk to her after i this, can i can help i'm just saying but they just made 80 grand on a on a on a 
on a, on a, they buy, bought the house and sold it in Chapel Hill in like a few weeks. Um, so I'm excited to take that class. Uh, and, you know, like I said, once I build it for her, I'm like essentially building my own business. So that's going to be so cool. But yeah, um, when it comes to what I promise, typically what I've been doing with my massage therapist client is I made the v- VBC, do it on his website, which someone already said that they booked him because of it. So that's so cool when I heard that. And then we're proceeding with 14 reels a month after that. So actually I, we plan everything out. Um, and then I come and we film for about four hours and then I'll edit 14 videos in about two to three weeks. So you're helping plan it, mm-hmm. physically filming it, mm-hmm. physically editing or your editor, whatever yeah. you as an entity getting it edited. And then do you like, here's 14 or do you post them? Like, do you have his login? I wanted to post for him, but he wouldn't let me. So I'm honestly trying to find someone who would, uh, my real God, estate post person. for me, man, just take, I'll give you well, 1% of thing. my company. Just do it. Oh, okay. I don't want to do okay. any of this. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, no, um, seriously, like yeah. off, off camera, we'll have a conversation about how we can barter this. But yeah. like, if we can make the numbers work, I do want to use you because I want you to do all of this because yeah. I I've have, for a contractor, so. I have so many, literal hours of podcast Mm -hmm. that you could just chop the audio and we could put a still or a video that's not mine, or we could make the video and have the audio be the background. Like there's, I already got half the content. Like I did half your job, (laughs) but I, you know, you're, you're going to have to spend hours going through everything, but yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. But you, you're literally the person, but you're literally trying to be the person that like, I want to take this to the next level. And I don't, I don't think and you're kind of confirming there's not a big gap between where I am and where I want to be. No. And I, and I haven't learned everything about you. Of course, I don't know your social security number yet, but as far as where you want to be, so it's one, two, three, okay, four, okay, five, okay. six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Everything's attention, man. I think you just need more attention. And especially when you go on social media and you're consistent, you're just going to become more of the industry expert. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, and I have such a, there's so many ways you can take it. Um, if this is of a desire for you, you can, like, I know that people like me are not joining the trades. There's a lot of, there's a deficit with young people. So, oh, it's, that's real. Well, imagine you take over yeah. and you provide the education and now all of a sudden you can create a, not completely passive, but a five or six figure passive income business through a educational course. So many uh, ways you can go about doing it. Yeah. You know, I, my, um, my girlfriend, Jen works for Sam cart and they are a SAS company. Okay. And SAS is huge. Yeah. yeah. And so like, all of the stuff that she's working on is like people who developed an internet course or have some, some, and they're trying to sell it. And it's like, it's, you, you know, know it's really cool. It's a very SAS. common thing. So there's a lot of industry leaders who developed a course, but they really make money off of the SAS. So there's a individual named Iman Godzi. This guy is a multimillionaire, uh, you know, millionaire in like 20. And he built a course on how to create an agency similar to what I do, but without video. So ad agencies. And he built a course, you know, he made money off of it. You know, he obviously had his agency clients, but where he really makes money is he's like, hey, look, I've taught you how to build this business. Now use my software to do it, man. It, you know, it's a CRM, it's, it's everything. But now it's like, you've got the sauce, you're making profit. You're not going to switch software. And so now I'm, I'm, I imagine, I don't know the price. I don't know how many people, but imagine if he's got a thousand plus people paying him a hundred bucks a month. Like you're in there with SaaS. So, um, and that's what, I mean, I'm in a content strategy mastermind where they're teaching me all this new stuff and they building a SaaS. They're building a, a custom, you know, CRM messaging, marketing automation, website builder, you know, and they're, and they're going to make money off of that forever. Cause you know, they teach you how to make money. Then they give you the tools. So yeah. SaaS is huge. I, ma- I imagine you could do the same thing with, uh, if you end up going that route with everything. I mean, for me, like AI is here, it's coming. Oh, Robots yeah. are here and they're coming, but at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, I've seen that robot print an entire house out of cement. It's very cool. It's like cylindrical. They're four mm-hmm. poor communities. I've seen those. It's the coolest thing ever. But I have yet, and I think it's a really long time away from a robot being able to replace that rotten window. Well, let me say this. So I'm needed. Yeah. We're still needed. needed. And we're and they the the tradesmen, you you uh, commented it on a second ago. They are aging out rapidly, 
and the younger generation is not there with interest to replace the workers. Which I would be doing that if I wasn't doing video, because like, why not, right? Um, but now let's say this, AI is not going to replace you. It's going to be someone using AI. So yes, the AI is 3D printing the house. They're not paying the robot. Somebody bought that thing and selling it, you know? So so there's that. Um, it kind of changed my perspective on everything, kind of took away the fear. And it's like, okay, I've just got to be the person to start learning and implementing it somehow. Yeah, I mean, for so. me, like, I don't have a fear of a robot <laughs> framing the wall. Yeah. Uh, but, you robot know. Robot smoking a cigarette outside. Yeah, that's probably more realistic. <laughs> yeah, Boston Dynamics, they're going to yeah. have a cigarette smoking robot. Um, but I think it's more like, I honestly am not afraid of AI in my industry. If anything, it's probably just going to make, like, quoting jobs faster. Because yeah. I'll be able to be like, square footage, this siding, you know, we're bought these windows and they'll be like, well, we checked 78 million window suppliers and these are the shortest lead time. And I'm like, I, that would have taken me a week of phone calls. Like that kind of stuff's probably coming. You know, we could have a different conversation yeah. about like how real we think Terminator is and whether we're all about to die. And that's a fun conversation too, because conspiracy fun. theories are super fun. Oh, yeah. And that's a legitimate fear for 1% of my brain. But I also think I'm probably going to, be dead before that happens so i'm not really i'm gonna just keep living my life <laughs> well here's a here's an ai tool that's kind of already here and it might be created and improved for you so there's a um are you familiar with adobe have you heard yeah of, okay yeah yeah so have you heard of adobe firefly yeah oh i don't use it but i've heard of it okay cool well i imagine they're going to create um something where it's like a customer wants a project they've got a house and they want to i don't know i have no idea but they change something Imagine if you could take a picture and then immediately show them to change. Like, hey, look, wouldn't it make presenting the price so much better? Like, instead of saying, hey, here's 50 grand and here's words on paper, like remodel this, remodel that. Look, here's an exact to the T picture of your finished house already. It's right there. You just this exists already, though. Oh. Yeah, renderings have been a thing for oh, a perfect. long time. Yeah, I, I don't use them because if we're being honest, I am not the $3 million custom home builder. So yeah. it's less needed, mm -hmm. but that's a thing a hundred, a hundred percent where, um, there's a program called Revit. That's what my, uh, parents company is using. Shout out WSDG, Walter Stork design group. But that's like, you know, you, you draw the studio on a regular drawing paper, architectural schematic plans, whatever you want to call them. And then, Oh, the last page is a 3d Revit rendering. Like this Very was cool. going to look like. Very cool. It's super cool. And yeah. for studios, especially, you know, they're, one, two, three, five million dollar boxes. And literally the finishes are the whole thing. That's the entire thing is, is do you want this wood panel to go horizontally, diagonally, vertically? What color? What stain? So you said studios, like big warehouse buildings? Is that what no, you're No, 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 no. My 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 parents design recording studios oh, for yes, yes, everybody yes. we listen to. Mm -hmm. And I literally mean everybody we listen to. If we want to name drop, I can. I'll give you the Name top. Drop. I'll give you the top Please. ones I can think of off the top of my head, in no particular order of fame: Jimi Hendrix, Jay Z, Ooh. Ooh. Alicia Keys, Ooh. Green Day, nice. Uh, the dude Paul, whatever, who does Paul. Adele's studio or does Adele's music. Okay, that that guy, um, J Cole. Wow. Yeah, he's here. I can't tell you yeah. where, but he's in North he's Carolina. He's somewhere. He's in North Carolina. Yeah, I've been there. I met him. Very He's nice. the nicest dude I've ever met in my life. Very he is nice. like so shockingly down to earth. And I don't think any of his like, I'm a nice guy is fake. Like he runs a basketball charity. He runs another charity. He's big yeah. with his church. He's had high school sweetheart. Like he's just a good dude who made it famous in the music and his music's kind of good. But like, yeah. So just to drop, you know, to, to name drop a few. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let so me, um, that's what he does. Let me yeah. check that camera. I think it turned off on me. Uh oh. Uh oh. But um, I'll just keep talking. Yeah. 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 So uh, he's checking cameras. We may have lost a, a battery. For the record, I offered this dude an extension cord. I also offered him a power strip, and he was like, "No, nah, I'm good." Well, that's, I'm so missing a piece. I'm missing a piece. I can't plug it up. He says he's missing a piece and can't plug it up. All right. So you were gonna swap batteries. Or we're just going to go, no, we're, we're going to go going one, on we're going on camera. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. We got some good content. Yeah, we got we got half the we got half or whatever percentage of yeah. the podcast on video. It's all good. Yeah. You just put a time limit. You just said half. So we got to go for another however long we've been going. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Dude, broke the rules. I, there are no rules. This is oh, my right. podcast, you're dude. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can talk house. about anything. Yeah. Dude, I had Ed King on here for two episodes. He's never done construction. Yeah? yeah he's a cartoonist. No way. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. In no fact, way. I should link the two of you up because you could probably do some cool video stuff with are him. Are we just talking like drawing or animation? Like comic books. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. like the he he you want to talk name drop. He knows all of them, like the Jack Kirby's of that world. Mm. He was like, yeah, I worked on Superman. I worked on Batman. I worked, you know, he all of it. And he was a cartoonist, a colorist, every level. That would and be so attractive for like content. Like people would watch that all day, man. Like a TV super show, fast like, video of him cartooning would be that, huge. Yeah, him oh, interviewing about his experience, yeah. everything. Yeah, he did two episodes. I met him at a, a Rockstar um, Connect event in Durham, which okay. you should come to. Great, great restaurant. So even if the networking is a fail, it's worth it. Perfect. Um, Nomu is where it's hosted, which okay. is a fantastic spot um, over by South Point Mall in Durham. Uh, shout out, <laughs> no affiliation, <laughs> but I'm a, a but I'm mall. a fan. Yeah, yeah I'm a yeah. fan of Nomu. Um, but yeah, I met him and we just kicked it off. We hit it off really well. And I was like, Hey man, do you want to do you want to come on? And he's like, Sure. We talked for about an hour, and he was we didn't talk about one thing construction related. And then right as we were wrapping up, mm -hmm. he was like, You know, as a kid in Pennsylvania. I did do a lot of construction stuff. And I was like, well, I guess we're doing another episode. Yeah. Sure yeah. enough, this dude rolls in in a Yankee jersey with cookies. And he's like, yeah, when I was 22, I was driving this deuce and a half dump truck yeah. down a hill, almost hit another truck. We were building picnic pavilions and then picnic tables and all this, this, that, and the third. And I was like, this is glorious. This yeah. is all I want. This I need like fantastic. a video reenactment of I'm sure now. I'm sure AI will be able to do that. Like you could just tell it. What, I mean, it can now. You just yeah. Have you seen the tattoo AI thing? No. So I I uh, half of me started to feel bad for my tattoo artist friends, and then the other half of me was like, "You guys are unique. That people go to you for your style." Yeah. But there's literally a free app where you just like type in like, "I want a arm sleeve of Batman in this style," mm -hmm. and. Pff, Chad GPD just makes you one, yeah, or whatever. The, Somebody's the still got to do it though, if you want it, right? I, I, no. I fear that it is like the the AI just took, just stole every artwork it could that fit those keywords, and yeah. then made a mesh. Obviously, somebody has to tattoo it, mm -hmm. and that's, I feel bad for writers and like graphic designers. Like I know, I'm sure you heard about the writer strike going. There's on. gonna be a there's gonna be something that has to be passed, be, uh, like a legislation of some kind, because there's just like no way that TV and movies would be able to survive with just relying on AI because AIs can pump out a script in like 14 seconds and it'd be like kind of good. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We are striking for the whole reason to protect these people. And they are about to be, forget about low on the poll. They're about to be off the yeah. site a hundred percent. Anybody it's free. It's completely free. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's going to have to just be a rule. There's going to have to be some sort of legislation passed that is like, I don't know what it will look like, but it's probably going to be like X amount must be written by I'm real there people. Won't be anything to enforce it. You know? Really? Uh, how can you prove anything? How can you prove that someone didn't write that? Wow, you that's know? such a good point. You know? Because AI didn't write it. They stole it. Right. They stole it from 47 AI's, million other writings. They're essentially they, putting together the pieces of, you know, they're copy and pasting, you know? Right. So it's like plagiarism at its highest form. But I do know you can ask ChatGPT if they wrote a particular script. But, of course, you can always change a few things once you get it. So it's like I said, how can you I, – I think if anyone's going to be able to tell – it's through watching a show and it being so bad. But, of course, AI is only going to get better. But, you know, imagine just a comically terrible TV show. To be the devil's advocate, though, that or they already exist and people watch them. Yeah, you're right. Like, how much garbage TV is out there? A lot. I don't know. There's a lot of garbage TV out there. Lifetimes. Lifetimes of TV. 
I mean, I guess. Oh, you you didn't mean the channel. You meant no, 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 like Lifetime. Towers. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, are we about to just shit on <laughs> Lifetime movies right now? Because that's an easy target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lifetime uh, Christmas movies. Oh my uh, god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're always on though. When the holidays those have been, those have clearly been just written by AI because they're all the same. Yeah. I'm surprised they don't have the same actors in all of them. Uh, well, I'm sure they, they probably I don't might. watch enough of them to. Me neither. Yeah, yeah. But I would imagine being a lifetime movie writer is the easiest job on the planet. <laughs> like, all you got, it's the yeah. same story over yeah. and over again. Be like, okay, it's Christmas, and somehow two really wealthy individuals are going to meet, and mm-hmm. it's going to be perfect. <laughs> and then they're going to think of something stupid to get in the way and, and meet at the end. they're going to adopt a kid outside the country. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to buy a dog rescue. Yep, yep. Oh, man. It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, there's definitely a fine line of, well, you can't you can't ignore AI. Like, it's here. No, you can't. You know? You're just going to get left behind, unfortunately. And I, honestly, I feel, like, really bad for, well, I don't feel bad for them. But, you know, there's some older people who just aren't open to learning anything, which, you know, that has nothing to do with AI. It's just, like, something that happens, right? But... Yeah, I can't feel bad for them. It's their choice. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I've got to, you know, got to figure out something. I don't know, man. I I wonder what will be the last, like, people affected. Hmm. Restaurants, maybe? There was a rest. There is a restaurant in Tokyo just run by robots. Okay, never mind. That's, that's, out the, that's over. Okay. I think. Stand-up comedy, I would hope. Because the other comedians would bust you if they knew you, if, if they could tell it was AI. I don't know, man. I, I think it's up to us what the last one is. What do we mm. accept? But then again, why? But then again, who's the we? Like there has to be, you know, if you and I mm-hmm. say we don't accept it, that doesn't mean yeah, shit. That doesn't mean shit. Yeah. That has, there has to be like a, 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 a governmental step. I don't even know. I mean, the last thing I want is to put the government in charge of anything because. To be honest, the government probably made the AI and is what's, it's what's using fi- it in the military. Well, let's ask a different question. What's the final form of AI? Of course, it'll never stop advancing, but... I think the, the final thing? form is like Terminator, unfortunately. Like Sky... Not the Terminator, but yeah. the Skynet, for those who don't know yeah. the, the, the Terminator world, universe. But like the uh, governing body of the machines is the Skynet computer system that becomes so advanced, it becomes... Sentient. So I wasn't, fam- I'm not too familiar with what Skynet actually is, but like, were they able to access like any information at all time and just yes. be able to create anything at like, yes. Uh, well, yeah, that's essentially the final form. But it was all, but it was all humanity's fault. Like humanity created usually Skynet. Is. Yeah, well, that's true. But at least in the Terminator world, it's like humanity created Skynet with like the greatest intentions. Of course. And then the first place that it got implemented was the military. Of course, mm-hmm. because they have all the money and can hire whatever. And then it was like once Skynet had had its paws in all of the military. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I can't remember it exactly. But around that moment, it became sentient. And it's like, oh, well, it controls the military, which even 10 years ago, all of most military stuff is so computerized, you know, like jets. Mm-hmm. The jet you see is a million dollars. The controls in the cockpit is two and a half million dollars. It and that's it's the greatest supercomputers in the world. And it's so it's like everything is run by a computers except for maybe the Glock handgun. Well, let me let me think. I just thought of something. So, right, I, we imagine with this AI becomes its final form. I love this conversation, by the way. Yeah, so good. <laughs> when it becomes its final form, uh, essentially it'll have so much power to, you know, whatever decision it makes is going to happen. So th- that's my assumption. So the assumption is then one of the options that it might choose, obviously might be kill or enslave the human race. But what if it's just like, you know what? I'm just going to shut down every single computer there ever was. Like we could go back to the... I don't know. I don't know if it's specifically Stone Age, but like we. Can I know go what back you mean when you say it. it. Yeah. Um, and that's. I think that's pretty scary because I don't know how far in the future that might be, and we may be so used to computers that we can't actually survive. Have you seen the show Battlestar Galactica? Never. Okay, so in that show, AI is so. It's based in the future. Okay. In that show, AI is so advanced that they have similar to Terminator. They have like 
humans who are mm. robots. Okay. And they're so advanced that those humans don't even know they're robots. They legitimately. That was in another movie. That was in um, what's that eighties movie? Blade Runner. That's yeah, like, Blade yeah, Runner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but but so it's like you're following, you know. At least for me, I binge watched it. You know, a couple years ago, you're following Edward James almost, who is the captain of the Battlestar Galactica, because they have to leave Earth, and they're just like all all two hundred fifty thousand humans are surviving on twenty ships in space, mm-hmm. looking for another Earth. Mm-hmm. And his, like, second-in-command is just revealed, season five or whatever, to be, what do they call it, a Cylon, I think? Something okay. like that. And it's one of the the skin jobs, as they, you know, call them. Skin job. Yeah. <laughs> but then the end of the show, and I mean, like, the very end of the show, is they find an Earth, and some of the Cylons are good and don't hate people, and some of them do, and they separate or whatever. And then literally on purpose... All of humanity puts all the ships with all the technology on autopilot into the sun to explode so that they can basically on purpose go to a starting over Mm -hmm. of a technology free humanity. Yeah. And then the real trippy part is it's like you think it's going to end and then it says 3000 years later and it's a shot of Times Square. Oh, like we just went right back to where wow. we were. Like it doesn't matter how. Like the river will self correct yeah. that that yeah. theory. Is that is that show worth watching if you've never seen it before? You think honestly, I only had heard of it. Dwight making fun of it on the oh, office, okay, okay, okay. and then I had a roommate in California, and she was like, "I'm telling you, it's good." And I didn't even have a job, so I was like, "You know what? I'm just gonna binge watch this shit." I was hooked. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, I. I don't know you well enough to know like your style of preferred media in yeah. terms of like what shows you love and prefer. But Edward James almost is a quality actor. That's a fact. And I'd say give it a season. And okay. if it's not fun, turn it off. Where, where is it at? I don't know. I watch it on Netflix. Not I think. sponsored. Okay. No, it's not. Sp- yeah, no. We're it's... not sponsored by Battlestar Galactic. Oh, I wish so bad. Uh, I met him once, Edward James almost. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Comic Con. Really? Ra- Raleigh Con. Yeah, I just went to Galaxy Con. Yeah. That was okay. That the was Raleigh okay. Con f- four years ago was super fun. I like I bought my Captain America shield there. Yeah, I saw that thing out there, man. Yeah. Yeah, I love the piece. Looks really it's, good. I'm a dork and and scuba diving and Marvel comics are my two things. Um but it was a lot of fun. I went the the second day when they were having the costume contest, so like everybody was dressed up. Like there's a picture of me next it's to like unreal when you see legit so Deadpool. Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was like, I was like, if he had swords, he would have been a movie costume. Like he had yeah. foam swords, and that was the only difference. Like it was so authentic. My favorite yeah. one that I saw was uh, the newest, the newest Batman. Costume. The Flash. No. Um, oh, newest. Sorry, newest Batman costume. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at GalaxyCon, okay. like the newest movie that they just, they just produced, I saw the um, the Patterson, yeah, Patterson one. Yeah, that is a dark, gritty I, I Batman. No, I I'd enjoy it. Different sentence. <laughs> I'm about to say, of course you, yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Enjoy the hell out of it. Different that. sentence. Very, very much. It loved was very it. dark. I, very dark. Yeah, I enjoy the storytelling. I forgot what was what was it that I like so much about. it? I, I think forgot. there's not enough credit given to Colin Farrell. And who is that? Is that the He director? was the penguin. The penguin. Oh. Under all that fat suit and all that makeup is Colin frickin' Farrell, who I have always been like, they throw him movies because he's handsome, terrible actor, but they I've, the script I've, I've changed my mind after Seven Psychopaths. I don't know if you've seen that movie, but no. he was Christopher Walken and, and Colin Farrell and Woody Harrelson do a hilarious movie called Seven Psychopaths. Okay. I could do a podcast on just movies. I'm such a movie dork. I just love them so much. Yeah. Um, it's very funny. Seven Psychopaths is good. Yeah. I'm going to watch Christopher that. Walken is just like, oh, he's, he's great. He's so good. <laughs> he's so good. <laughs> I want to be able to talk like him so bad, but I feel like I can't. I don't have the, the impression. That That's because you have proper punctuation. Yeah. Mm. If you actually listen to Christopher Walken, the voice is iconic, but it's it's really what you want me to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no punctuation. Like yeah, it's yeah. so funny. <laughs> you know he was um a classically trained ballroom dancer? No. That's his background. Mm. Wow. There's that very famous rap music video that I can't even tell you who's singing it or the name of the song, but he's dancing in it. Mm-hmm. 
It's not CGI. That's him. He's that wow. agile. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty Holy cool. Holy crap. The more you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Put that in the bank. Put that in the bank. Yeah. Throw it in the pipe and smoke it. Um, man, man I, we've had such a good convo. For I know. so long. I don't even know how long it's been. Well, let's wrap it up, man. Let's wrap yeah. it. Yeah. So for people who want to find you mm-hmm. for your number of services that aren't even fully capped at the moment and yes. forever growing exactly. what's give me your so give everybody your your number your email your socials whatever you put out in the world let's do it if you want to go right to business go ahead and visit www.njcvisuals.com if you're a social person instagram is noah crawford ceo i feel like a douchebag for putting that in there but oh well uh, Facebook's Noah Crawford. Uh, Does your business card say "I'm CEO, bitch"? Like that Facebook movie? Yeah, exactly. Movie? <laughs> exactly. Well, my my when I cut grass, my my motto on that was, you know, I'll cut your grass, you pay my ass. So it's you know kind of similar, right? I like that. Yeah, I like see that that eliminates an uptight clientele. Yeah, because if they don't like that saying, they're Goodbye. not going to hire you. Hire hire somebody else. Perfect. Yeah. Filtered marketing. Dude, my, I got to credit my dad. He, he came up with it. But in California, I had a company, Corbett's Custom Carpentry. Okay. And the tagline was, we take pride in our wood. <laughs> yeah. What a great, like, culture. Because you already know he's going to be a cool guy when he shows up and does the right. job, right? That's, yeah, I had a, a bunch of people being like, that's a little... That's mm-hmm. a little... Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want that person to hire me then. That's if like you, a friendly step behind being edgy, though. I feel like yeah. that's fine. Yeah, I mean, it was spelt correctly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Um, do you have a... Uh, are those it? Do you want to put, like, phone number or email or anything? Uh... No, if 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 you don't want, uh, so on the website you can actually schedule a call with me. Perfect. So yeah, if you don't feel like doing that, we might not work together. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. If you want at least people who are able to do that. Yeah, if you yeah. can fill out your name, email, and number, then I, I think we have a good start. That's a good start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't text me at four a.m. Yeah. So. No, no, no. Not cool. Not cool. Bro. Um. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, man. And as always, um, the Iron Chamber podcast is on Instagram, Facebook. Let's go YouTube as well. Uh, you can email me directly, Corb, C-O-R-B, at WSDG.com, um, or 845-489-6057. If you need work in the Triangle, or you want to come on the podcast, or you want me to talk about something specific, specific, excuse me, feel free to reach out in any of those platforms. And um, this was great. Now, yeah, I just, I really appreciate you coming, yeah. man. Glad I uh, could come. It was, uh, you're a cool dude, man. You got a nice spot. Uh, it's not too far away. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. I got to come back. Uh, Let's schedule one. uh, Let's schedule another one. Let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. Well, uh, appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Bye.